patient is a 59 year old, old woman with history of hypertension and diabetes who presented with subarachnoid hemorrhage and hydrocephalus requiring placement of a ventriculostomy. Uh, she was taken for angiography uh, that demonstrated uh, an aneurysm at uh, the origin of the left superior cerebellar artery. It was a small aneurysm. Uh, the, the shape in the 3D angiogram appeared to be a borderline uh, characteristic of a neck uh, that could be maybe a little bit wide for coiling. However, when we did the 2D angiogram, we saw that the neck uh, was narrower than, than suggested in the 3D and that this was an aneurysm that was uh, amenable to coil embolization. Um, the aneurysm measured 2.7 millimeters by 2.3 uh, millimeters in diameter. Um, this type of aneurysm when uh, treated could have been clipped, could have been treated by endovascular means. We decided that it was a, a safe case for embolization. Um, and uh, of all the endovascular techniques, uh, we decided that the primary coiling of the aneurysm was uh, a very uh, safe and uh, an adequate treatment. You can see how we are advancing a headway dual microcatheter over a uh, uh, Traxxas microwire and a uh, Synchro 2 soft microwire into the aneurysm. We have a DAC38 intermediate catheter for support that is advanced uh, very distally into the vascular artery. And now uh, we uh, proceeded uh, with coiling of the aneurysm. Uh, when we advance the microcatheter, we always have a coil open in case there is rupture of the aneurysm as we're catheterizing it. Um, the first coil that we chose was a Target 360 Ultra 2.5 millimeters by 4 centimeters. Uh, as you can see, we're advancing it very slowly. And uh, uh, it, it was a small aneurysm to begin with, so, th so the two main things that we uh, uh, working with right now is uh, making sure that uh, the aneurysm does not rupture as we're coiling it, number one. And number two, equally important, that we don't lose access uh, uh, of the microcatheter uh, given the small size of the aneurysm. Uh, as it would be challenging to recatheterize it. Uh, that's the main reason for having uh, the distal access catheter very uh, high in the vascular artery so that we have good stability of the microcatheter and the microcatheter remains stable throughout. Um, you can see how so the coil is protruding into the parent artery at this moment. So we are repositioning the coil uh, to make sure that uh, the entire coil mass is intrasecular and not in the normal parent artery. Uh, we're doing this uh, very, very gently. Um, and Again, uh, you can see how now the, the coil is taking uh, the very uh, ideal shape to frame this aneurysm properly. An option uh, would have been to put a balloon into the basilar artery into the, and all the way into the PCA to protect uh, at least the basilar and PCA. However, that would have not uh, necessarily protected the superior cerebellar artery. Um, other techniques uh, uh, different from that in the acute setting would have been uh, would have not been ideal um, as, as a stent was not a, a feasibility at this point given that she had a, an acute uh, ruptured uh, aneurysm uh, with a ventriculostomy in place um, we tried to avoid uh, using any type of stent that requires antiplatelet therapy uh, during the acute period of subarachnoid hemorrhage, given the potential need for uh, shunt, uh, given the potential need for any other surgical intervention. Again, you're seeing how the coil, again, is slightly protruding into the parent artery. So I'm gently repositioning the microcatheter a little bit deeper into the aneurysm. For me to advance the, the microcatheter into the aneurysm deeper, I use the uh, coil pusher wire as a typical micro wire, so I do uh, pull it back uh, gently uh, before advancing the microcatheter to avoid any perforation or rupture of the aneurysm uh, uh, from pushing the coil 
into a soft spot uh, or weakened spot of, of, of the aneurysm. Again, the, the uh, shape of the coil is uh, the, uh, like an ideal one that is framing uh, the, the entire aneurysm. So, so at this point, we know that we show the appropriate size of the coil. Sizing of the aneurysm is critical, and as uh, my mentor used to tell me, the most uh, difficult coils are the first one and the last one. The first one because you need to uh, size appropriately, and the last one because you need to know when to stop. Uh, and here, you're seeing how we're uh, crossing the proximal marker, and now the coil is entirely inside the aneurysmal sac. Um, I had to reposition the microcatheter a little bit as the, the microcatheter came back despite the fact that the coil was in the aneurysm, the microcatheter was protruding uh, into the parent artery. Again, uh, we after advancing the microcatheter, we again cross uh, the entire uh, coil mass into the aneurysm. Um, so we do a control angiogram that shows uh, that the aneurysm, uh, that the uh, coil is inside the aneurysm, and that the parent artery is protected. Bef at the time of detachment, uh, after detaching, I always do it in blank, blank mask so that we look at any movement, and then I advance a little bit the uh, uh, coil pusher before coming back in case there was a little tail into the uh, uh, microcatheter that we can push into the aneurysm. And this is uh, a, a second coil that we're advancing, a target uh, uh, 360 uh, nano 1.5 millimeter by 2 centimeter coil. Uh, that we are ad advancing into the aneurysm. We did not heparinize uh, the patient during this procedure. Again, she had a uh, ruptured uh, aneurysm and uh, she had a fresh ventriculostomy. So we do prefer not to anticoagulate for these cases. Um, if, if this was a type of aneurysm that was much larger, the, the procedure was going to be much longer uh, with a significant number of coils, maybe that would have been a, a different case and we would have, yes, a heparinized. But in this case, uh, we only needed to advance two coils. You see how now we're crossing the marker. The, uh, so the second coil now is uh, into the aneurysm. The, you can see that this uh, uh, marker was a little proximal, but we advanced it and we detached that second coil with a problem. Again, I advanced a little bit the uh, coil pusher uh, before coming back, uh, when I say a little bit less than a millimeter push, uh, just to make sure that we don't have any uh, coil tail in the microcatheter. And that, then we advance the uh, microwire inside the microcatheter before removing the microcatheter, again for the same reason, to make sure that we don't have any coil inside the microcatheter. And we do this very slowly. Now the microcatheter is out and the distal access catheter is out. Control DSA examination into oblique projection shows uh, that the aneurysm is well protected uh, and occluded with the coils. And then we do a, an entire head view, AP and lateral, to make sure that we don't have any thromboembolic complications uh, due to the procedure and everything looks completely normal as the, all the distal arteries are patent.